The next item of business is a statement by Annabel Ewing on a review of legal aid. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Annabel Ewing. Ten minutes, please, Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. At the outset, I would uh, wish uh, to draw members' attention uh, to my uh, entry in the Registers of Interest, where they will find that I am a solicitor by profession, uh, that I do hold a current practising certificate, albeit that I am not currently practising. Presiding Officer, I am grateful for the opportunity to inform Parliament today of action this Government is taking in respect of the legal aid system in Scotland. In the programme for Government, we made a commitment to commence engagement this year with the legal profession and others to identify specific measures to reform Scotland's system of legal aid, maintaining access to public funding for legal advice and representation in both civil and criminal cases alongside measures to expand access to alternative methods of resolving disputes. Presiding officer, publicly funded legal assistance plays an absolutely vital role in providing citizens with the ability to enforce their rights and in upholding social justice. In Scotland, we have maintained wide access to legal assistance across both criminal and civil cases, notwithstanding budgetary pressures. We have a demand-led system with a high eligibility rate meaning that all who apply and are eligible will receive publicly funded legal assistance. The system is founded on the Legal Aid Scotland Act 1986, a statute that predates devolution, human rights legislation and other major reforms to the justice system and which is now over 30 years old. It has appropriately been subject to 30 years of updating to ensure it reflects current needs, both in human rights terms and to meet the social justice ambitions of government. Legal aid adjustments are a regular feature of the Justice Committee workload and I would like to take this opportunity to thank members of that committee past and present for their engagement and in ensuring that we maintain a strong legal aid system. However, as a result, we have a rather complex web of regulations that can be difficult even for seasoned legal practitioners uh, to navigate at times. The commitment in the programme for government reflects our view that the time is right to review the legal aid system in Scotland with a view to taking forward a programme of future reforms of the system. As I mentioned earlier, publicly funded legal assistance is an important aspect of improving lives and tackling inequalities. There are a range of perspectives on how the legal aid system might be improved for those that need this public service and for those who deliver it. Therefore, I think it is important that the wide range of interests in the legal aid system play a part in shaping future reforms. I therefore intend to establish an independent review group to consider the legal aid system in 21st century Scotland and how best to respond to the changing justice, social, economic, business and technological landscape within which a modern and flexible legal aid system should operate. Indeed, the programme of justice reform in Scotland in the last few years has been significant and is shaping a much more modern and progressive civil and criminal justice system. Importantly, uh, this includes a greater focus on the needs of individuals engaging with the justice system. Hence, the legal aid system must keep pace with the reforms and developments in the justice sector. So a review of legal aid is timely and I note that both the Law Society of Scotland and the Faculty of Advocates are supportive of a review being taken forward. I note too that some of the parties represented here today also had a manifesto commitment to look at our system of legal aid and so I hope uh, that our planned review will be welcomed by members across this chamber today. Legal aid is a complex and technical subject, but it matters to individuals, especially those who are most vulnerable. Therefore, it is vital that the direction and leadership of the independent review reflects that. Presiding officer, I am delighted to announce today that Martin Evans, Chief Executive of the Carnegie Trust, has agreed to chair the review. He brings a wealth of experience, having previously been the CEO of Citizens Advice Scotland, a director of the Scottish Consumer Council and Consumer Focus Scotland and a director of Shelter. He will be assisted by an expert advisor, Alan Patterson, Professor of Law at Strathclyde University and director of the Centre for Professional Legal Studies. Professor Patterson has extensive knowledge of legal aid systems in different jurisdictions around the world. 
Martin Evans will also be assisted by a review panel. We are finalising the panel with the Chair and I am delighted to confirm the following panel members. Colin Lancaster, Chief Executive of the Scottish Legal Aid Board. Janice Scott, QC, a highly respected QC with interest in all forms of child law and Chair of the uh, Faculty of Advocates Family Law Association. Brian McConaughey, QC, who has conducted many high profile trials and appeals during his time as Principal Advocate Deputy and now is involved in a wide range of serious and regulatory crime cases. Lindsay McPhee, who is a criminal defence solicitor advocate and past president of the Glasgow Bar Association. Jackie McRae, who is a civil legal aid lawyer, specialising in family law and a former member of the Council of the Law Society of Scotland. Susan McPhee is head of policy and public affairs at Citizens Advice Scotland. Deputy Chief Constable Ian Livingston of Police Scotland works across the justice sector. He currently sits on the Scottish Sentencing Council and was a member of Lord Bonamy's post corroboration safeguards review. Professor Fran Wazov is a, fam a professor of family policies at the University of Edinburgh and is a member of the Scottish Civil Justice Council's Access to Justice <coughs> Committee. Alison McInnes, OBE, is a former MSP and justice spokesperson and has an extensive knowledge of the governance of Scotland and its public and third sectors and was awarded an OBE for public service in 2013. I hope that members will agree that the review panel represents the broad range of interests needed to review the legal aid system. The review will have the following high-level remit. Legal aid in the 21st century, how best to respond to the changing justice, social, economic, business and technological landscape. The review needs to consider those engaging with the system, both the end users and the solicitors and advocates providing their services. At the same time, it is clear that the legal aid system should be efficient and comply with the principles of best value and public service reform. It will be for the review group to set out its full programme of activities and the chair has already begun pre preliminary work to do so. I anticipate that work will include engagement with a full range of stakeholders with an interest in this work. And indeed, I would encourage everyone who is involved with the legal aid system to engage with the review at every opportunity. The independent chair will lead the review and present his final report to ministers within a year. Ministers will respond to the review's recommendations in due course. Presiding officer, in establishing the review, I think it is important to recognise that the legal aid system in Scotland has many strengths. We have maintained the wide range of scope of civil legal aid in Scotland despite a challenging financial context, a fact that is applauded by our international legal aid colleagues. We have maintained generous eligibility criteria. We continue to operate a demand-led system and everyone who is eligible for legal aid will receive it. Therefore, regardless of budget constraints, no one is turned away. This is in stark contrast to the position in England and Wales, where regrettably the amount of civil representation funded through legal aid in England and Wales has fallen by about a third since the commencement of the Legal Aid Sentencing and Punishment of Offenders Act 2012. Indeed, a recent Amnesty International report published in October 2016 and entitled Cuts That Hurt, the impact of legal aid cuts in England on access to justice, evidence that in the area of social welfare law, there had been a 99% reduction in the number of welfare benefits cases in receipt of legal aid funding since the introduction of that legislation. At the same time, legal assistance is no longer available for certain types of family, housing and other non-family problems such as welfare reforms. In Scotland, however, I would wish to point out that legal assistance for family, housing, welfare and other non-family problems has been maintained. For example, we have maintained access to publicly funded legal assistance for people pursuing contact and residence cases in Scotland, assistance which has in many cases been removed in England and Wales. Presiding officer, in outlining our proposals for a review today, I think it is important to also assure colleagues that updates and improvements in the day-to-day -day operation of the legal aid system will continue to be put forward to ensure the proper functioning of the system. In that regard, I wrote to the Justice Committee on 27 October 2016, detailing my short, medium and long-term plans to improve the legal aid system. In the short term, we will focus on making essential provision for legal aid by means of Scottish statutory instruments in response to new developments, as we did, for example, with respect to the introduction of simple procedure. In the medium term, we are developing proposals to streamline and modernise the current system, particularly for those who provide advice, assistance and representation. 
This responds to the proposal set out in the Law Society paper, Legal Assistance in Scotland, fit for the 21st century. For example, proposals on certain fee reforms as regards criminal legal assistance have been developed and will be taken to the profession in the near future. These proposals will seek to adjust the way in which fees are structured to more appropriately reflect the services provided by lawyers and simplify the ways in which fees can be paid. I look forward to engaging with the profession on this. The review I have announced today will take a long-term, independent and strategic look at the system of legal aid, including its purpose and the outcomes we as a society want it to achieve. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, the review of legal aid that I have announced today offers a timely opportunity to take a strategic, independent and long-term look at our legal aid system to ensure that it is fit for purpose, that it is fair and that Scotland's population can continue to access support when they need it most. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement and I would allow around 20 minutes for that. Uh, please press your request to speak buttons now and can I say that there are many people who wish to ask a question and we won't get through them all unless there is a, a bit of brevity and could I ask the front benchers to set that example. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, and could I thank the Minister for advance sight of her statement. Access to justice is one of the most important tenets of a civilised society, with the legal aid system fulfilling a crucial duty in this regard. It is, however, a complex, outdated and at times inefficient system which would benefit from simplification and wider reform. As such, and to ensure the most vulnerable in our society receive the legal assistance they require, Scottish Conservatives called for a review of the legal aid system in our 2016 manifesto, so today Today's announcement is certainly welcomed by members on these benches. The Minister mentioned the Law Society's paper, Legal Assistance in Scotland, Fit for the 21st Century. This document argues that the justice sector overall has kept uh, track of inflation and other cost drivers, but this has not been the case for legal assistance, meaning that law centres, the advice sector and other frontline services have challenges around funding. In light of these comments, could the Minister expand on the proposals for fee reforms to which she, uh, her statement briefly referred? Uh, further, I understand from the Minister's statement that the Scottish Government is finalising the panel members, and we certainly wish those already appointed every success in their task ahead. And I'm particularly pleased to welcome the involvement of Alison McInnes, uh, who did great work in this chamber and has a wealth of knowledge and experience, which will no doubt be beneficial to the group. But can the Minister advise if any further addition to, to the panel will be made and if so, which sectors will these extra members come from? And finally, Deputy Presiding Officer, the Minister mentioned a demand-led system where everyone who's eligible for legal aid receives it. Therefore, can she explain to me why I have a constituent in Fockabers who uh, is currently out of work, he's severely ill in hospital, and his only income is through benefits, yet his uh, application for legal aid has been denied for divorce proceedings, yet the other party who is in work has been uh, given legal aid. And this type of ambiguity and inconsistency does cause some concerns with the current system, and I'd appreciate her response on that. That was hardly brief, Mr Ross. Annabelle Ewing. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'll try to, to give uh, brief answers. Uh, in, in broad brush, uh, in terms of the, the uh, reference to the Law Society's document and, and the budgetary issues, uh, I think it is important to say that uh, the uh, allocation of legal aid funding for the legal aid fund itself is the same uh, this year in terms of the draft budget as it was last year, 126, 126.1 uh, million pounds against the backdrop, of course, of continuing cuts in the Scottish budget from uh, Westminster. In terms of the, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the fee reform issue that the the, the, the member raised, uh, I think you'll recall I wrote to the Justice Committee in, in quite some detail, and that would be one of our medium uh, term uh, uh, plans that we intend to bring forward and have been working on that uh, and we'll be discussing that uh, with the legal profession in terms of uh, some elements of criminal work and looking at potential block fee arrangements. In terms of further additional panel members, uh, we have been working with uh, Mark Nevins, the chair, and uh, in conjunction with him, those uh, announcements will be made shortly. Of course, absolutely, we are uh, committed to ensuring that there is uh, a proper balance in, in the review panel to take into account all relevant interests. Uh, uh, finally, the uh, specific case to which the member referred in his uh, list constituency. Um, I, I obviously, as a minister, cannot comment on, on individual cases. What I would suggest that the member does as an MSP is invite his constituent to contact the Legal Aid Board uh, to see if there's anything that can be done. Claire Baker. 
thank you, President Officer, and thanks also to the Minister for an advanced copy of the statement. A review into legal aid is welcome, and we wish Martin Evans and the review panel well in the task ahead. I understand the Minister's decision to highlight the difference between the scope of civil legal aid in Scotland and the rest of the UK, where there are significant cuts which are having a serious impact on access to justice. However, there are serious concerns in Scotland over the sustainability of the current legal aid system, which the Law Society says is putting at risk the provision of legal services to some of the poorest and most vulnerable in our society, and that gaps are developing in provision. It would seem that in order to address issues of availability of legal aid, more resources would need to go into that provision. Unless there is the option of more funding, there are concerns that the scope could be then limited. Are these options included within the review's remit? And can I ask the Minister if the review is restricted to the current budget parameters? Annabelle Ewing. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, as I stated in answer to uh, Mr. Ross's, uh, one of Mr. Ross's uh, four questions, um, the funding allocation for uh, the legal aid fund itself for the coming year uh, is the same as it was last year, £126.1 million. Of course, legal aid is demand-led and therefore it's not a cash-limited cash budget. Figures that they, I've seen in some Law Society documents have a different figure in mind and that includes the administration budget, if you like, for SLAB. That's a different element. We're looking at the legal aid uh, fund itself uh, uh, in terms of our draft budget, which uh, we will be discussing further on Thursday. Uh, and needless to say, if there's no budget, there's no money for, for the legal aid fund. Um, we have committed to uh, a wide scope of legal aid, as I think I was trying to give flavour to in, in my statement, and we, are continue, we will continue to be committed to a wide scope for legal aid. I think it is absolutely vital uh, that uh, everyone who needs uh, support in terms of accessing uh, uh, legal aid in Scotland is uh, able to, to get it. The review I announced today is independent and it will be up to the chair and his expert and his review panel to uh, uh, engage, to investigate and to discuss uh, and they will do so uh, without fear of favour. Of course, we are having this review in 21st century Scotland in 2017-18 uh, and we are, as a, a Scottish government, subject to significant financial constraints in terms of our budgetary settlement from Westminster. Uh, and I would imagine that would be a fact known to every single member uh, sitting on that panel. Now call Fulton McGregor to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister has given an overview of those who will form the review board. And as in the response to Douglas Ross, she has assured Parliament the membership will cover a wide range of expertise and issues regarding legal aid. But will she um, advise if this will include representation from those who work with people that rely on legal aid? Uh, Annabel Ewing. Yes, I, I did uh, announce in detail the, the panel members, uh, and uh, I think the member will, will see that uh, various interests and, uh, are, are represented, uh, including Citizen Advice Scotland. And I think it's clear from the membership of the, pa the review panel that really the, the breadth of expertise and experience is really quite uh, uh, substantial indeed. And I, I'm very grateful indeed to all of the panel members who have agreed to bring their expertise to bear on this really, really important uh, uh, policy review uh, that we have announced today. John Finney to be followed by Gordon Linters. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, I thank the Minister for uh, early um, sight of the, of the um, statement. Uh, the Scottish Green Party welcome this review. Uh, I'm particularly delighted that former colleague Alison McInnes is involved. The Scottish Green Party also support greater use of alternative dispute resolution that will avoid litigation and avoid prosecution and thereby uh, potentially reduce costs. Access to justice is peppered throughout your statement, and that obviously applies to environmental law too. Minister, you'll know that in the last session of Parliament, the Scottish Government had a consultation, developments in environmental Could justice in Scotland. Could we get to the question, please, yes, Mr indeed. Finney? It's about the Our House Convention. Will this review cover the Our House Convention and remove any dubiety about Scotland's compliance with it? Annabel Ewing. Uh, well, as I say, the, the review is independent and, and all members can, are encouraged to, to make their views known to, to the review panel. On the Our House Convention, uh, I, we have uh, taken on board uh, all uh, the elements of that in terms of access to environmental information, in terms of uh, public participation and in relation to access to uh, justice, uh, where changes have been made to standing for judicial review to create a clear uh, 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 broader entitlement to take a case to court, including for environmental uh, uh, NGOs. In terms of the uh, position of environmental court, we pr proceeded with a, a consultation, I, and I understand that an analysis of that consultation is to be published uh, shortly, and uh, I, I'm sure that the member will have further comment to make at that time. 
Gordon Lintert to be followed by Mary Evans. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. May I also welcome the review announced by the Minister, and like her, I have an interest in the matters in my case as a practicing advocate. Those at the court face, such as many of my colleagues in the Faculty of Advocates and others in the legal profession who deal in legal aid cases, may be surprised and disappointed to hear the negative comparison made with the English system in view of the current state of legal aid in Scotland. Can the Minister confirm that this review will not be a downwards-only review, further negatively affecting the ability of the most vulnerable in Scottish society to obtain legal representation? Annabelle Ewing. Uh, well, I, I did feel it, would be, it was helpful in the, the, the statement to put the, the Scottish legal aid system in some context, that a system that is recognised internationally as being one of the most generous in the world by the international uh, legal uh, aid group. Uh, and I think the, the comparisons with what the, the Members' Party is doing down south uh, in respect of legal aid, uh, significant cuts to the budget and also uh, significant cuts to the scope of legal aid actually available to people, 99% reduction since 2012 in legal aid available for welfare benefit cases. I think that's really quite a shocking statistic. Uh, the review panel is independent and it will proceed to uh, uh, investigate, to take in uh, people's uh, views and submissions and to reflect and to have discussions and to formulate the recommendations. And I have total confidence that they will do that without fear of favour and bringing their tremendous breadth of expertise uh, to the table. Mary Evans to be followed by Mary Fee. The current legislation, as the Minister has mentioned, is largely piecemeal with the last substantive act being formed in 1986. Now, the world is now a very different place with rapidly changing technology, so does the Minister anticipate that any legislation created as a result of this review will be able to reflect the changes in technology as we move forward? Annabelle Ewing. I, well, I thank the, the member for a question, and I think it's uh, an important one. Uh, as I mentioned, the Express Review uh, the remit of the review uh, is also to look at, in 21st century Scotland, uh, changes in, in the technological landscape. And I think that's very important because I don't think we've seen anything yet in terms of changes in technology. Uh, I, this fits in with our justice digital strategy approach. Uh, it fits in also with SNAB's uh, increasing use of online uh, uh, platforms and the ability to, to submit applications online and to treat online. And I think there's much more that can be done uh, uh, in terms of uh, facilitating easier uh, access for users of the system and also uh, uh, simplifying the process and maximising efficiency. So I think on the technological front, it will be very interesting indeed to see what the review panel come up with further to their engagement uh, with wider uh, stakeholders in Scotland. Mary Fee to be followed by Ben McPherson. Thank you, um, Presiding Officer, and I'm grateful to the Minister for early sight of her statement. The Minister makes reference to proposals to streamline and modernise the system and goes on to say that proposals on certain fee reforms as regards criminal legal assistance have been developed and will be taken to the profession in the near future. Will these fee reforms include civil legal assistance? And if not, what is the timetable for looking at fee issues surrounding civil legal assistance? Annabelle Ewing. Uh, the fee reforms to which I was referring uh, in my earlier answer uh, uh, are, is work that follows from uh, uh, strands of work that were commissioned uh, from SLAB uh, in terms of my predecessor, Paul Wheelhouse. And one of those strands is to look at the possibility of streamlining funding in criminal uh, cases, uh, in some criminal cases, and that work has, has continued to pace and uh, I understand from officials that we're nearing the point where we can go and have de detailed discussions with the Law Society on that, and obviously we'll be keeping the Justice Committee informed of that. In terms of the position of uh, civil legal aid and, and wider legal aid system itself, again, uh, the review panel has been set up, they are independent, and it will be up to uh, the panel as to how they wish to proceed and how they wish to map out their focus and, of course, informed by the submissions that they receive from members and from the public alike. Ben McPherson to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. With regard to assisting those who are most vulnerable, can the Minister assure Parliament that the extra support provided to the Scottish Women's Rights Centre to provide legal information and advice to women affected by gender-based violence will continue during the duration of the review? Uh, yes, I'm, ha I'm happy to, uh, to do that. Uh, uh, and uh, I would say that the Cabinet Secretary announced last year some £665,000 
uh, extra money to the Scottish Women's Rights Centre to enable them to continue their excellent work in terms of their surgery work and their uh, uh, signposting on uh, uh, to women in that position. Uh, and I know that they are hoping to extend from their base in Glasgow and Lanarkshire to extend north to Dundee and I think the Highlands as well. So that's very welcome. And indeed, I can confirm to Ms McPherson that that funding uh, will continue per the Cabinet Secretary's announcement. Liam MacArthur, followed by Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Deputy President. Officer, can I also thank the Minister for early sight of her statement and notwithstanding uh, the now customary critique of what's happening elsewhere in the UK, I think she gave a fair assessment of why this review is needed. I very much welcome uh, both the establishment of the group and its membership, not least uh, my former colleague Alison McInnes. But can she advise the uh, Chamber on the likely time frame for the group completing its work and will she ensure it takes account of any uh, specific issues in relation to rural and island areas in relation to legal aid and access to ju uh, justice more generally? Annabel Ewing. Uh, I can say to the member that the uh, review will take up to 12 months uh, and uh, I think that the, the point that the member has just made about rural and island communities and their particular position is a point that's very well made and I know, uh, at least I assume, uh, that the review panel and the chair will have a look at the uh, official report of this statement and ensuing question and answer session and that that point will indeed be picked up. Oliver Mundell followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. At a time when SPICE have confirmed uh, that the Scottish Government's budget is increasing, many people will wonder why we're seeing a real terms cut in legal aid. Rather than talking about what's happening in England and Wales, does the Minister have an explanation? Annabelle Ewing. Um, well, I, I think what is clear uh, is that as between 2010-11 uh, and I think 2019-20, uh, Scotland's budget will decrease by some 9.2%, which accounts to some £2.8 billion. Uh, and imagine what we could do with that. So uh, instead of uh, whinging on to the Scottish Government about cuts from Westminster that his party is making in London, perhaps he might wish to direct his comments to his colleagues in London. Rona Mackay, followed by Rhoda Grant, if we're quick. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, in all reviews such as this, hearing from stakeholders and those with first-hand experience is vital. What steps will be taken to ensure wide engagement from stakeholders with the review? Annabelle Ewing. As I did in my statement, the widest engagement possible. I, I'm conscious that we have set up this independent review and I feel, therefore, I don't want to uh, unduly step on the toes uh, having just done that very thing. Uh, but I, I'm sure that the, the way that the review will be taken forward is to, to seek uh, evidence from wherever it can be submitted because that will uh, best inform the review uh, and how they determine uh, their recommendations. Rhoda Grant, and we might even manage to get Stuart McMillan in. Thank you. Further to clear Baker's question, this, but this year's budget was a standstill budget. Therefore, will the review panel be able to make recommendations to increase the scope and payments made under legal aid, and can it look at how time and distance are taken into account in legal aid payments? Annabelle Ewing. Um, as I said uh, earlier, uh, this is an independent review. They will take the review where they want to go. Uh, as I also said, uh, uh, we do live uh, in 21st century Scotland in times of great budgetary restraint and further to budget cuts from Westminster. So uh, I guess if you're sitting on a panel, that is something that is part and parcel of how you approach the issue. Uh, but in terms of the nuts and bolts issues that, uh, that Roger Grant mentioned, in terms of time and distance and so forth, I would encourage uh, Roger Grant to, and, or her party to make submissions uh, in respect of detail that she holds hopes that the review panel will, will address. And finally, a quick question and answer, please, Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, Minister, if the review recommends a change to, le to legalisation, uh, sorry, to legislation, will the Scottish Government accept their recommendations? Well, as with any uh, review that has been commissioned by uh, uh, the Scottish Government, uh, present or past, uh, we will await the recommendations uh, of the review group with interest and we will carefully consider them and having duly considered them at the appropriate time, we will of course then bring matters back to Parliament. That concludes questions and we now move on to the next item of business. I'll give a minute or so for people to change their seats.